It's time for Screen Junkies Movie Fights. Ed, that's a great story. We'll pick it up later, okay? <laughs> hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Movie Fights. Hashtag Movie Fights Live. I'm Hal Rudnick. I'll be your host today. And we have got so much fun in store for you. And helping us keep some law and order around here and decide the battles, etc. We got the Dans. Let's go to the Dan Cam. Dan Merle. Hi. Hello. What's going on in the world of fact checking today? Oh, how? You don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm ready to, to check all of these facts. Heck yeah. <laughs> Listen to arguments, make objective decisions, and uh, ultimately be told that I'm wrong. The internet. I mean, yeah. The uh, the comment section can be it can be a harsh place. Sometimes it can be forgiving. No, though. I meant my mom. She texted me after the show. I'm just, You're wrong. I'm like, okay. Uh, very tough judge, but you know what? <laughs> tough. You, you, you know, you responded to the tough love. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Uh, sitting next to Dan, we have the delightful Danielle Radford. Oh wow. Danielle. Uh, so uh, let me uh, quickly uh, let folks know about the, some judging stuff, and then you can tell us what you're going to be focusing Heck on. Heck yeah, okay? man. Yeah. So every argument, Dan and myself are going to weigh in, and if there's a tie, you guys decide. And you will speak through the delightful conduit that is Danielle Radford. Danielle, take it from there. Fill us in on what's going on. I am the voice of the people, Hal. Yes. <laughs> Um, so the way this is going to work, and I know that um, people have been asking, so we put it in the description. So click on the description. It will tell you exactly how this is going to work. But um, just so you know, you guys, there's going to be a poll, YouTube only, not Twitter, although I will be checking your comments and letting y'all know which ones are funny. So, like, try your best, you know? Um, <laughs> just, like, do your best work. I trust you. Um, but go ahead, and if you're looking for it, when it appears, now, the new poll question isn't going to start until the question has been asked and some people have gone through some stuff. You go ahead, you click on the icon, the little I button, it'll show you the new poll. Um, if you're looking for, like, updated results or the updated poll, and you're like, what's happening? The trick that I use is I go down to the gear, and I turn annotations on and off, and that kind of refreshes stuff for me. It's great. Danielle. Glad to have you there. And uh, also, you're going to be on Sick Meme Patrol, right? Sick Meme! Give me your dank memes. <laughs> Keep I will dank. make fun of you if they are bad. <laughs> what a quality control in this job, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, talk some junk on Twitter, and uh, maybe we'll give you a shout-out during the show. And what a show it's going to be. We're going to be talking Marvel. We got some other questions related to a certain sporting event that's coming up this weekend. <laughs> a lot of crap is going to go down. Let's meet today's competitors. Uh, first up, he's a comedian and a writer, and uh, you have seen him a lot on Screen Junkies lately. Please uh, make some noise for Ed Greer. Yeah! Woo! Hi, guys. Ed, uh, plug something. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, plug one, plug two, De La Soul. Um, basically, uh, Ed Greer destroys for all your your snark needs on Twitter, and, and, and I'm also an artist, and you can check out my stuff on Instagram. Nice. Ed Greer destroys like, on all platforms. So you're an artist. Do you do a, a commissioned work? Uh, mostly just chicks with guns. It's a nice subgenre. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> to commission chicks with guns. It's an option. Nice. Um, could you like draw a picture of like uh, Salma Hayek holding an AK-47? Exploitative and feminist. Boom. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what about uh, Frida Kahlo holding an AK-47? Even more feminist. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> Sick. Uh, this guy's a friend of the family. You've seen him on Screen Junkies many times. Uh, they also call him the master of the speed round. Uh, it's Koi Jandro. It Koi. is good to be back, man. I am, I'm excited. I missed fighting. I missed using the weirdest knowledge in my brain for good and not evil. Uh, and it's good <laughs> to have an outlet for listening to Eminem my whole life. So here we are. Nice. <laughs> and uh, we threw a Marvel question in there for you because you are one of the hosts of Marvel Movie News. One I of am. Co yeah, you can find uh, Tuesdays on Popcorn Talk. We uh, do a live show, all things Marvel from all the studios, uh, pop up and collider sometimes. I just love talking comics and I love the fans. I love that the internet is so chock full of comic love right now. Like Black Panther comes out so soon and it is going to change everything. 
Not that I've seen it and loved it, but I see Black Panther. It's just it's such a magical time to be a comic fan. Like we we won. There's, there's a victory among nerds, and it's magical. Hell yeah! I remember we had you in when Deadpool was yeah. coming out, and your excitement got me excited. And then it took over the world. Yes. And it changed our rated like <laughs> landscape. It's just it's a magical time, guys. Hell yeah! People were cussing, and eating chimichangas all over. And the people place. have changed since. Hell yes. There was a pegging oh. scene in a major motion picture. <laughs> Deadpool, thank you. <laughs> On that note, JTE, roll that package. Prepare to die. Ladies and gentlemen. No. It's main event time. Finish him! Yes! Yeah! Oh, wow. Uh, so, for those of you who are rejoining us again for the first time, did that make any sense? I don't know. <laughs> but we have two fighters. We have three regular questions that, again, Dan and myself will judge. Danielle will be holding it down on the tiebreakers if and when we need them. After those three questions, we go to the speed round. Four speed round questions where it's anybody's ball game. Even if someone is down 3-0, y'all can come back if you sweep that speed round. Koi, are you ready? Ready. Ed, how you feeling? Uh, I, I feel like I should have did the plug round better. <laughs> Forget it! No That's ancient for history! <laughs> Let's do this. First question. What dead slash retired MCU villain should come back for one more film? And we're going to start with Koi Jandro. I'm going to start with the holy trinity that does not get enough credit. The Iron Man films are glorious in Marvel. Captain America came back with a big way with Winter Soldier and Civil War, but Iron Man set the bar and started the MCU, literally. And in the beginning of the MCU, they started with the Ten Rings. They led up to the Mandarin, and then the Mandarin we got, we got was the most polarizing version possible. I personally like Ben Kingsley's Mandarin. I like the bait and switch, but for the entire hordes of internet that did not, I think the Mandarin deserves to come back as the actual Mandarin. I want a Daniel Day Kim Mandarin. I want an actual nefarious evil Mandarin that isn't a, a punchline. I think it was a great way to have the Mandarin relevant. I think it was a great way to use Alder Killian and make him worthwhile, but why not have him come back again and have him as an Emperor Palpatine? Why not have him come back as someone that's been pulling the strings even more than we thought? Why not have the Ten Rings we set up in the first movie, which were not resolved in Iron Man 3, actually resolved in the fourth film, and give Iron Man his Lex Luthor? There's a reason that Iron Monger felt just like Iron Man, because he was. There's a reason Whiplash felt just like Iron Man, because he was. And you cannot have your best villain and breathe fire and you cannot have a bait and switch villain where it was obvious they wanted the female villain to be the female villain and the studio decided no no guy pierce we haven't yet had the perfect iron man film while we have the perfect iron man with the mandarin we can have the perfect iron man film with the perfect iron man and bring back the one true nemesis of iron man by having three movies of setup and have your emperor palpatine the mandarin deserves his own movie he deserves to come back for more thank you coy strong opening statements ed greer what do you got for us um I, I can't rebut that already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you will have your time. You will have your time. Uh, Tell us who I'm, you're arguing I'm for. I'm chomping at the bit to rebut that. <laughs> I like it. I like um, it. Okay. Uh, you know, I've been on here before, and sometimes I come off like a jerk, like I know everything. I'm just going <laughs> to dial it back and tell you guys a couple things that I believe. Red Skull is my guy. Red Skull needs to come back because, as you can see, uh, much like Nazism itself, Red, Red Skull, you know what I mean? Red Skull represents that and can represent that and can get its face smashed in these times where we really need some Nazis to get their faces smashed. <laughs> he could be a good proxy in a Jack, Jack Kirbyan way, a good proxy for us. And it's a nice do-over because in the first movie, they tried to divorce him from Nazism so they could sell toys or whatever. You know what I mean? So they wouldn't have to put swastikas on all these neat toys for Christmas. <laughs> and and they divorced him from that, from that true blue... <laughs> origin you know what i'm saying they divorced him from that history which i don't think is cool i think what they did bring him back full nazi he comes back out of the co cosmic cube with a bunch of cool powers super full nazi gets his ass thumped 300 million dollar movie you know what i mean that's i want to see that and i think america needs to see that and that's all i'll say for now all right good opening statements let's mix it up you want to rebut rebut okay uh the concept, you know what? This is the one time that Marvel just threw the entire history away for a character that I actually agreed with it. It was a wonderful bait and switch by Shane, Shane Black in Iron Man 3, and I don't, think, I don't think we should undo that. Also, the Mandarin, let's take out the whole iron fisting 
thing that they did with Ben Kingsley. The first time they made an, an Asian, uh, or rather, uh, a martial asian -y sort of Asian-y. Wow, this is getting worse by the second. It's very delicate. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> uh, the first time they made one of these uh, cultural appropriator characters, that I actually agreed with it. I was like, this is so cool. He's taking Eastern mysticism and a little bit of the shadow and mm -hmm. all this garbage and, and fake news it up in this in this weird way. I thought that was masterful and to dismantle that, I think does an injustice. So my, my goal is not to dismantle that, it's to further that. I love the idea it was a bait and switch that worked for the audience, but mm -hmm. we never actually landed on the villain. In my opinion, Aldrich, Kingsley, uh, Aldrich Killian wasn't the Mandarin. So I think we still haven't seen the Mandarin. My Mandarin would be someone we haven't met and that bait and switch would remain and then we'd get the final that would have all the Iron Man fans have their come up and so I'm not erasing any continuity. I'm actually building on continuity. My problem with the Red Skull is that he works really well in the past. But if you look at the Captain America films, the weakest of them is the first Avenger because of the pacing, because of the type of movie they had to make. In my opinion, if you bring in the Red Skull to modern day, it doesn't work because of that. Red Skull was a great portrayal by Hugo Weaving, but if you're going to have him come back, it's not for one film, it's for three. This is for one more film. If you want to tell the Red Skull right, you have an arc. You build up the Red Skull. That's the nemesis. You can tell the Mandarin in one film because we've had three of building up to it. We haven't had a Red Skull that would land in modern day without having to have a full arc. Captain America, Red Skull, Lex Luthor, that's the way it works. With the Mandarin, we've earned it so we can have that final button. The Red Skull needs much more time well, to kind of retcon the fact that he's only been yeah, in the past. I, I would rebut the fact that he's earned it. Like I said, it was a nice, uh, it was like a, it was like a nice Three's Company episode. <laughs> you know, it's like, ah, we had an epic misunderstanding. He didn't really have 10 rings. He was just an actor. You know right. what I mean? He bangs broads. This is crazy. It was, it was like, hilarious. It was like Tucker Max did a rewrite on the script or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, and for me, that was quite enough of the Mandarin. Uh, in regards to Hugo Weaving coming back, I, I don't agree that it would have to just be for one movie. Even if it was for one movie, in that story, he would be doing something like he did in uh, Nick Spencer's Hated Run, where with the cosmic cube powers red skull is remaking our present day reality into a more more fascistic mm -hmm. reality and we could take on all those subjects and whatnot uh, i i just believe that that would be infinitely more interesting than us trying really hard not to uh not to fetishize uh asian people in, with with a portrayal of a certain sort of you know, sort of a Ming, Ming the Merciless type. Well, I think avoiding uh, archetype. that would be uh, to the the main goal is to actually have an Asian uh, portrayal that wasn't pandering, that wasn't that was actually the character. And I think that we haven't had a character in the Marvel universe that is that. And well, I think, I think that's more great... execution dependent, though. And like you said, uh, the Red Skull was trapped mm -hmm. in a Rocketeer. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? He was he was trapped in he was trapped in the Rocketeer, if you will, the Rocketeer of movies, which is lower than the Civil War. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Era. So I, I, I mean, it's a Civil War uh, sort of aesthetic. So what I'm saying is to bring Red Skull into, they, they made Zola. Mm -hmm. The living computer cool. He was one of Red Skull's, like, henchmen. But that's, that's they, what I'm saying. They can make him but cool. To, but to bring Red Skull into now, I do believe it'd be infinitely easier to make him cool than a little nebbishy guy inside a computer. Well, yeah, Would you but, still see uh, Hugo Weaving uh, playing uh, Red Skull? I could if he'd be willing to do it. It felt like he wasn't that down. Uh, I can certainly see them recasting with a CGI face and a cool guy's voice. Give yeah, me, all they need is the voice. It's a Red Skull. Right, and I, I would love to see them redo the skull because once he comes out of the cosmic cube, He's put himself back together a different way, but uh -huh. thusly a different aesthetic. Hydra's already for. disassembled. We've already like lost Hydra. Hydra's not a shell of what it was. If you're going to bring back the Red Skull, you need it to be a leader of a force, and he comes back to a world that's not his. That's why you need more than one movie. My problem is uh -huh. Red Skull comes they back. They just with take Hydra over Trump's homies. That, they, I mean, those guys are in, there. That's in the they're world. They're there. They're I mean, very obviously there. there. There's no Phantom Army. We missed they're our Hail there. Hydra. <laughs> just go get some tiki torches, and he's got a force. Oh no, 100%. He can just he walks down to South Carolina. It's a thing. Wait, he's saying the Red Skull was in Charlottesville? <laughs> okay, so who would you see uh, playing the Mandarin? I love Daniel Day Kim. I think he's extremely underrated. I think if he doesn't play Namor, he should play the Mandarin. And I think that it would require a lot less backstory than fixing the Red Skull. And I think that it's a movie that we deserve, whereas the Red Skull already lost Hydra. We've already had the three movies. Captain America's already arguably evolved past him. And we've lived this long without Charles Xavier in the universe, which was that amazing run I yeah. like too. We've lived this long without these characters. I think Red Skull works better in comics than in movies. And I think the visual aesthetic of Red Skull might not translate as well. The hard thing about Mandarin, we're talking about that appropriation, that conversation. I think the Red Skull is a very, tricky character visually to get right and I think as long as you handle him delicately the Mandarin can be right because of that first movie that one ring gave us so much story for where we can land I want to land there and we haven't yet 
Um, I want to uh, ask you guys to put it in layman's terms for comic book fans and non-comic book fans. Just give us again the uh, a clear storyline that you'd want to take from the comics and have your villain follow or something you'd want to interpret from the comics and put into a movie. Uh, Ed, uh, let's start with you. Um, basically, any sort of pastiche, like I don't want to get into the minutia of plot here. You know, There's a reason why we're here instead of in uh, somewhere else. Okay, uh -huh. so But I do believe... It would be very simple to take a pastiche of some of the things that Ed Brubaker has done with uh, with Red Skull, especially Red Skull's incessant uh, obsession with the Cosmic Cube, trying to get it back together. All those all those different th and like I said, that there's sort of a John Osterman thing that we could do with Red Skull, literally putting himself back together over time, maybe maybe manifesting in certain ways uh, that the Avengers see and are trying to counteract, and they don't really know what it is, and then he pulls himself molecule by molecule back together through the power of the Cosmic Cube, and now we have a we can have a thousand foot tall Red Skull if he wants to be. He can be whatever he wants. He's like Korvac uh, for like old school fans, uh, sort of a silver surfer as a guy on a couch type character because uh -huh. all, all this power is within the Red Skull. To, to have an ultimate, to have, an, to have a Nazi be that in charge, I can't imagine it. Oh, wait, I can. <laughs> gotcha and uh thank you uh, ed and uh koi in all three iron man films he always solves the problems with science and that is the brilliance of tony stark iron man 3 he goes through the entire film not in the iron man suit because he can scientifically solve these problems how do you thwart a man that is more brilliant than any other man you bring in mysticism the mandarin is a master of mystic arts the likes of which tony stark is i mean the likes of which like uh, uh dr strange is yeah. so you bring in someone that is his equal but in another realm where he can't hang so you make a movie where you're seeing this guy train you're seeing all these underlings we've had three films of people that work under him so in the first film that big bad is just a henchman with one ring the second film we see him pulling the strings the third film we have this aldrich guy that might be his second lieutenant but someone that thinks he's more important than he is and then boom fourth film we find out who the actual mystic master is we meet the mandarin we sing that he's been responsible for all of Tony Stark's problems. Maybe he kills Pepper Potts because at this point she is done with her contract. You know mm -hmm. Gwyneth Paltrow is out of the Marvel Universe. So we see how powerful he is. And then you have Tony not being able to rely on science. He has to swallow his pride. He has to call in the Avengers for the first time because in all the movies they've made it very clear he's not a man that wants to do that. We have him have to backtrack on his Civil War distinctions and we realize that he is a team player and that is the end, the final arc for Tony Stark is him swallowing his pride, becoming a team player and having to rally them together to take out the Mandarin who's been doing all this from the beginning. So you're pitching a full trilogy between the Mandarin and... No, no, it's just okay. the one film because we've already gotcha. had the trilogy. Gotcha. The trilogy is already built in for us. You throw three flashbacks from three films you already have, it allows you to have a quadrilogy because we already have three. Okay. You got a really angry fan standing in front of you saying, your guy's dead. The thing's <laughs> done. Uh, you, they pulled the rug out from both of your characters. We don't need to see them. The MCU is far past that. How do you respond to that, Koi? My character has not been met yet. My character is literally Emperor Palatine behind the scenes. My guy is not dead because he hasn't been introduced. The concept of my guy is dead. My guy is dead only in the eye of the beholder. My character can't be dead because he does not yet exist. So therefore, everything we've seen is waiting for my character to manifest. So they can't argue anything. Actually. Gotcha. Ed, respond to that angry fan. Uh, my character is, it's not, it's a classic do-over, which is what these movies are entitled to. Our children are going to watch different actors play every damn body. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. <laughs> so, so, so that that's the point I'm making. We deserve a do-over on Red Skull because he was trapped in a phantom zone of a film. And I, I, I believe that if we apply current uh, uh, super cool Jason Bourne aesthetics to him and th and this new way the Marvel Universe is, is is basically they know how to make the sausage now is all I'm saying uh -huh. he, he was he's like that he's like one of those old drawings of uh, Bart Simpson with the you know, it, it's all fucked up <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. You know what I mean? Uh, you that's know, okay. You should have heard Scott Mann's last week. <laughs> anyway, so, you know what I'm so that's what I'm saying. It's like it's it's it, the Red Skull that we saw in the first Avenger was much like the Steamboat Willie, uh, uh, you know, Mickey Mouse. I think we deserve a fully refined Mickey Mouse. I, you know, that's what I believe. And if you could pick one actor to play, that, would it be Hugo Weaving? Or, we, we talked a little bit about it. But if you're gonna have, if you can reboot it the way you want, you know what? I'd like. Clint Eastwood doing a bad German accent. No, um, I don't. Um, you know what? I really think Hugo Weaving could do it because I think that we would we we're, we've mastered the way to CGI his face to where it'll the consistent skull effect will be there without having to use makeup. So I think Hugo Weaving could reprise reprise his role and do well. Time. Wow. Uh, can we hear it for both of these combatants? Ooh, yeah. Man.
Um, what a battle. You guys, I mean, I felt like I was in between the Mandarin and the Red Skull here. Uh, we got goals. We want them back. Yes. Um, th- these, th- these battles, uh, these arguments were both fantastic. I mean, uh, Koi, uh, you were talking about not getting full Mandarin. And then, uh, Ed, you brought up uh, like kind of an, an underrated argument that I really appreciate that it was a great bait and switch that there was that uh, you know Shane Black was having some fun uh, with that script and uh, you both like schooled me on some interesting uh, tidbits and moments from the comics and from these characters' history, but I feel like it came down to Ed. You were saying that we'd could kind of reboot and reinvent this character and it sort of washes away to an extent the Red Skull in Captain America the First Avenger whereas you said we were kind of building up to this moment with the Mandarin and the way you were talking about the Mandarin and the machinations Mm -hmm. being the puppet master from behind the scenes and then you teased a little bit of a Doctor Strange coming in perhaps because that mysticism, Mm -hmm. you might need some mysticism to fight uh, mysticism. But then, Ed! (laughs) <laughs> you brought in the present day politics, which I really, oh, I got my juices flowing. Oh, at the end of the day, I, I oh, wow, you stop making this hard for me, guys. Um, at the end of the day, though, I feel like the movie that is most in place to be made uh, is Koi's. And I'm going uh, 1 0 for uh, Koi and the Mandarin. Dan Merle. This is a very tough decision. Factually, uh, it is true. Red Skull's comic book origins were as a Nazi, then he was part of Hydra, whereas the MCU, they, Hydra was a, well, it depends on, if you go to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., it's an ancient cult. So the, the, <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole thing. Uh, <laughs> not Nazi. Uh, and also, Ed, many times you made, uh, this is a just semantics thing, you referenced the Cosmic Cube and the movies, it's the Tesseract, but it's the same general sense. Uh, and uh, David A. Kim, uh, ironic, not ironically, coincidentally, has appeared in two non-MCU Marvel movies. He was in Hulk with Ang Lee, and he was in Spider-Man 2. He's so close. So uh. if he were to make an appearance, this would not be the first Marvel movie for him, but it would be the first MCU movie for him. This is a very difficult decision. Um, I feel like you both had pluses and minuses. I thought that you both kind of muddied your characters' histories a little bit, where maybe there was some chance to clean that up. So it kind of washes out on both of those points. But I think the most concise pitch that I heard as far as where they fall into the mythology of the character and how it relates to the established mythology was from Koi. So I'm going to have to give this one to Koi as well. And that means Koi is going to get the point. But Danielle, I want to hear about some craziness on social media and what people voted. Okay, well, just for fun, please. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> So it looks like going again on YouTube, not on Twitter. I just feel like I need to keep saying that. Yeah, man, a lot of y'all were into the Mandarin, um, which was funny because like it came from behind. It was really <laughs> Red Skull, um, and then you just argued your way into that Mandarin. Um, a couple of the best things that I saw. First of all, thank y'all for all the Parks and Rec gifs. Please keep tagging me. <laughs> They're all amazing. They just keep. It's like you know the way to my heart. Um, Jack Shipley at JRS Pipboy2000. Oh, good Lord, don't make me do that. Um, <laughs> wrote, bring back Thomas the Train from Ant-Man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. That was one of my favorites. <laughs> it's really good. Uh, look him up, because there's a gif. Nice. <laughs> yeah, and then a lot of people just uh, gifing me um, mandarin oranges. That was also <laughs> nice. Well done. Okay, for um, the record, a couple, I'm of, the go cuties, on record a couple saying, of the the cutie oranges, which are also adorable and great. Mandarin <laughs> oranges are not a villain. You know what the villain is? Scurvy. <laughs> okay, they're the solution. Yes, they're the hero. <laughs> thank you, uh, Danielle. Thank you for that. <laughs> thank you for being on Meme Patrol. Um, Ed, I, I'm, I'm just like listening to the conversation in Marvel headquarters. We can't have swastikas on our toys. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that was so funny. The idea, I'm like, we have to sell this. What do we do? Hydra. Oh my God. That's watch, the solution. Watch it start flying off the shelves as collectors' items. Sure. Oh, anyway. uh, <laughs> okay, uh, we got one zero for Koi. Let's see what the question is for round number two. In honor of the big game this weekend, what's the best 
football movie. Man, how about it? The big game. The, the the biggest of them all. You definitely sound like you like football. Thank the you for letting us know. NFL championship game. Are we allowed to say Super Bowl? We said it. Okay. <laughs> um, best football movie. We're gonna start with Ed Greer. Okay. I I firmly acknowledge how uh, un uh, unconventional my choice is, but my choice is Shane Black's beautiful screenplay, The Last Boy Scout. What? <laughs> the Last Boy Scout is my favorite football. Look at, oh my God, that's beautiful. Look at Damon, that's Pete Damon Wayans there, guys. That's it, Pete it it's, it's Damon, Wayans Damon Wayans there, guys. Height of power. Oh my God. And uh, and and uh, this is semi-peak, uh, uh, you know, uh, Bruce Willis. But anyway, <laughs> uh, the thing about Last Boy Scout is, much like the best shark movie of all time is Jaws, correct? I'm glad you said Jaws. Right. No, no. Damn, oh, I was gearing up, man. I'm glad you said like, Jaws, too. No, no, no. I, I misspoke. 47 meters down. Um, no. No, okay, so the Deep best... Deep blue <laughs> so the shark's been. It really is. <laughs> so the, the bottom line is, in that movie, you hardly ever see the shark. But when you see the shark, it's very important. It's very important, it's very important for the plot, it's very stirring and it's very moving. And that is the way that I would like to, uh, this, that's a flavor of how I'm gonna argue Last Boy Scout as the greatest football movie of, time, of all time because it's really about the way that I see football. And that's what I'll say. Okay, all right, intriguing. Koi Jandro, best football movie of all time. I would like to argue the best football movie of all time is one that's about more than football. It's about spirit, it's about family, it's about bringing people together, it's about how horrendous racism is, it's about the glory that is Denzel Washington. I am of course talking about We Are the Titans, the Mighty Mighty Titans. Now Remember the Titans is a movie that you hear We Are the Titans, Mighty Mighty Titans that is stuck in your head for days. The movie is so good that it made Buena Vista Pictures just rally around sports films. This is a movie that had the Rudy moment with the kid getting injured and rallying behind him. This this is a movie that had commentary on such important subject matter that people in, you know, perhaps the government today should watch Remember the Titans. This is a movie about sports entertainment being about more than just sports, which is what I think sports movies are about. Sports movies are about more, like, I agree with you, sports movies are about more than just the game. It's about what it does to people. This is a movie that made people rally together. It's about people that showed the problems in their thought process. This is a movie about becoming a man and leading a team to victory, and it's about kids and it's about overcoming adversity this movie has so much in it that it doesn't need any crazy hijinks it doesn't have any crazy uh, uh explosions and i love shane black as much as the next guy so i'm gonna save the rebuttal because man it's gonna be hard to talk badly about last boy scout but when you're talking about a football movie there's a reason remember the titans shines so bright and is an entire generation sports movie remember the titans is the one gentlemen you both have had good kickoffs to this <laughs> argument <laughs> <laughs> um, now let's play the rest of the first quarter. <laughs> Mix it up! <laughs> good guess. Good guess. Um, okay, Th this is my thing about when you say that um, it's, mo it's about more than football, that kind of means it's not about football. Last and, Boy and, Scout? And, and, and Last Boy Scout <laughs> is all about football because <clears throat> the, the, the only reason why we care about these pituitary cases slamming into each other at high speed <laughs> is because people gamble on that and people watch it to the tune of several billion dollars. And to me, that, my friend, is what football is actually about. This, 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 this black hand and white hand walking together into CTE that you're selling me, no. I don't, I don't get that. They're walking together into the concussion tent. Oh, you know what I mean? Sports uh, I, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, but I'm, I'm just saying, it's just like ebony and ivory laid up on a gurney. Like, oh, who cares? <laughs> like, literally, who cares? <laughs> to me, a, a billion dollar industry being taken down by a ragtag bum and his, and his ex-black 
he's not ex-black. He's a black. <laughs> he's a black ex-football <laughs> player sidekick guy, and they, these are the kind that shred. And he throws the shotgun into the. Come on, man! But you're this talking about a movie stuff. that, in its opening five seconds of advertising, shows a really cool football shot and then pulls out a gun because it doesn't have to sensationalize anything, so it pulls out a gimmick. Shane Black made a really good movie right before this called Lethal Weapon, which was actually about a great cop on the edge and his partner. Then they're like, "What if we have almost as good as Mel Gibson, Bruce Willis?" Because honestly, that's a Bruce. Willis is and then you throw him in with Damon Wayans that's I'm sorry that's not Danny Glover you well, got two guys that are the B-list versions of characters written by the guy that actually wrote the best buddy cop movie of all time the only, and then you throw football in it that mm, is just that is just a sad the only pop. the only thing Bruce Willis is inferior to Mel Gibson at is answer machine tapes <laughs> <laughs> I mean I mean because like Mel Gibson a, can go for days he's got he's, he's got styles, he's got lungs, styles, upon he's got styles. <laughs> Bruce Willis isn't great at answering machine tapes but he is good at phoning it in. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, so my problem with uh, The Last Boy Scout is it was a great way to make an action movie and throw in a gimmick, and the whole movie feels like a gimmick. For me, The Last Boy Scout is a movie that involves football only as, like, what's that sport that is relevant today that we can make gambling about? Oh, okay, football. Whereas Remember the Titans is about the opposite. For me, Remember the Titans uses football as a way to attract audiences that wouldn't normally watch a movie about such important subjects. Well, I mean, I, I do love the fact that it is selling generation after generation on getting slammed into for the profit of the ultra rich. I understand it as it's a, a profit as, as a Washington propaganda tool. People together. Oh jeez. There's geez, no money please, in this. Man. It's high school. We're grown ups. They're high school I'm kids. Say, <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying. I, I just don't I don't like that as like this civil rights as a poison pill to indoctrinate people. But it's into based on a true story sort of about thing. overcoming yeah, things. Yeah, I, I get it. But you, you sprinkle some civil, <laughs> you sprinkle some civil rights on basically uh, concussion. The story, you know, I just don't, I just don't like it. I don't, I don't like the way it's heading, and I don't like the fact that that so much emphasis is put on sports in that way. I love the fact though that people think about all the blind side e let's hold hands stuff about sports. But Last Boy Scout really pounded it home. What is this about? The new age gladiators, what they do to their bodies, no one cares about. What they do to their minds, nobody cares about. Nobody cares about their lives outside of it. But we all root with our Cheetos in our, in our, in our sleeves. You know what I mean? We all root for them and we drink our Pepsis and we watch them destroy themselves. So you're That's saying- That's what Last Boy Scout is about and that is what football is about. Just making sure I want to wrap my head around your argument. Are you saying that uh, Last Boy Scout has more of a cynical take on football and it um, deconstructs? Uh, you could say cynical. You could say realistic. Mm -hmm. you, could, you could say a lot of words. Uh, but they made a movie about that uh, called Concussion that did it better. Will Smith, Concussion, was a movie about that with the science to back it Tell up. Tell the it's... truth. He did not do a good African accent. I mean, so no, that, no, no, no. We're, we're, we're not talking about Will Smith in Concussion. We're talking about Concussion. But, yeah, Will Smith in Concussion is not a conversation that needs to be had. But Concussion itself is handling those things in a movie that doesn't need the gimmicks and the glamour and the pizzazz. Last Boy Scout just didn't have anything except pop. Whereas, for me, Remember the Titans, I understand what you're saying about, like, Ebony and Ivory and that, and that movie being that. But it's Denzel Washington, a Ending into peak Denzel Washington. It's Denzel Washington delivering these powerhouse speeches because the one thing you watch football movies for is that big coach speech. And you cannot mm -hmm. argue that Denzel Washington's big coach speech, remember the Titans, right. is not the best. Yeah. And at the same time, you get like baby Ryan Gosling, you get Ethan Suple in a great performance. You get like people that are in this movie that turned into mega stars at the beginning of their ascension. And there's a reason that all these people became stars is because of Remember the Titans showing the world that it's more than just a sports movie, it's a movie about people. I mean, like I said, I, I, I do get that and I respect that and I'm not quite as cynical as I'm coming off. <laughs> I, I just agree with myself that uh, <laughs> that Last Boy Scout is just as a way to examine a sport, especially in the era Last Boy Scout comes from. Mm -hmm. I don't even think you could make Last Boy you could make Last Boy Scout right now. They would they would do all kinds of stuff to it. They'd have the, they'd have the rock and he'd be he'd be you know what I mean. He'd be he'd playing be, both leads. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he'd be zip lining across the <laughs> Super Bowl to, to fight some guys. Uh, you know. Gentlemen. Okay. For your closing arguments, I want you each to deliver it like you are an Al Pacino style football <laughs> coach okay. in any given Sunday. I want you to rally everyone and to get a stirring in our loins. That's the only thing I could think of. Not that's the wrong thing to say. <laughs> But get us stirred in our hearts and souls. And Ed, we're gonna start with you. You're a football coach, go. Gentlemen. <laughs> we gotta rally around this movie. We gotta rally around this fighter, Ed Greer. He's getting a drubbing. It looks like he's gonna lose another one. He's the most decorated, funniest jobber in movie fights. This is nuts. <laughs> <laughs> so
So, what I'm gonna need you guys to do is march your asses out on that field. Damn the plays! <laughs> Don't even wear helmets. <laughs> Freak them out. Just run out there and kick some ass for Ed, all right? Because if he loses this, if he loses this round, <laughs> no one's going to Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> wow. Whoo! Man, that is good stuff. Toy right. John, bro. <laughs> Give us some closing thoughts in a football coach. I'm a uh, gentleman. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's been a long time coming. It's been a rough season. You need to understand that the movie I'm talking about represents more than just cinema, more than just Buena Vista, more than just Disney. And they're paying the check, so I mean, you gotta understand. This movie represents the betterment of mankind. And many, many people that watch sports aren't always about the betterment of mankind. So we're tricking them. You see what we're doing? It's a bait and switch, much like the Mandarin in Iron Man 3. <laughs> we're making them think that they're watching a sports movie, but we're actually using Denzel to preach, hey, love your brother. Doesn't matter what color he is. Hey, love sports, because we all love sports. Hey, some people are better at sports than other people. Maybe that's okay. And what I'm saying <laughs> is when you watch sports, you can all band together. You become a family. And what you guys are is a family. So I need you as a family to represent me and make... We are the Titans, the mighty, mighty Titans, the call to arms for football movies forever. Hoorah! Wow, all right, let's hear it for both of these combatants. Uh, let's go ahead and start with our man, Dan, the man Merle. I mean, I know Ed's coach felt as if he was letting it down, but he, he pointed something out early in the fight that I kept an ear out for the entire rest of the fight, and he was right. And Coy never really answered it. He said, you mentioned everything in your argument about this movie except for football. And Coy did admit he argued for every aspect of his movie except for football. There was no, it's the best football movie. And I heard why it was a great movie about togetherness and brotherhood and Denzel and his great performance. But Ed, to me, sold why his movie was the best football movie. It was about... People, you know, the economy and th these guys and the corruption and money and gambling. It's like maybe it's not the most positive in the world, but he <laughs> sold me on why it was the best movie about football. So I'm going to go with Ed. Bam. That's 1-0 for Ed. Um, yeah, you bring up th that's a really interesting point because I'm, I'm looking at uh, some of the notes I wrote down. And uh, yeah, Coy mentioned spirit, family, racism, Denzel. <laughs> Didn't mention football. Uh, Some of those things are important to football. <laughs> but um, I feel like, but I feel like it's inherent. It, it is about a football team. So uh, you're talking about the quality of the movie. Uh, but then. I, I thought Ed had some great points about the manipulative nature of certain films where like you just like you turn it you know into basically you know this hallmark story of like you know a black hand and a white hand holding hands and walking off into the sunset which I, I think is a nice image actually but, uh, still um, we have to. and um, Ed, <laughs> yay uh, Ed. Yes, <laughs> um, but uh, um, yeah, you had some, you, you had a lot of great points that made me think about those motifs and are they overused? Are they just in, um, intentionally uh, manipulative? But uh, you had uh, some really excellent points about Lethal Weapon, about Shane Black, about the composition <laughs> of that movie, you know, and. Is it a lesser Shane Black effort? And in turn, is it not the best football movie? And you really started to win me over um, with that. So for that, uh, and the fact that you celebrated so many uh, great things about your film and you took down his choice effectively, I'm going to go with Coy and send it to Danielle for the tie-breaking vote. Yike. OK. Well, um, this one is pretty decisive. Um, Folks really like the Titans and they would like us to remember them. So um, it was 63% for Remember the Titans, 36% for Remember the Titans, 
for the last Boy Scout. I will say, Ed, you did wind up like that gap was way bigger, <laughs> and you wound up closing that gap. Um, a few notes from the social medias. Most of you very proudly don't know uh, football movies. There were a <laughs> lot of Friday Night Lights references, and mm -hmm. just by reading them, I know that you watched the show and not the movie. <laughs> it's That's true. Very yeah. clear. That's it's true. Slippery slope. You guys, guys their eyes full hearts. It's not the movie. Yeah, I get it. Chandler, not Billy Bob. Whatever. Yeah, big old <laughs> There. <laughs> um, Any Given Sunday got a lot of love, which is great because it's also my, uh, I like that movie, my personal favorite my football day. movie because people asked, is the program. Um, there is a huge discussion about whether or not soccer or American football is what we're talking about. And guys, come on. I mean, Ben, guys. Back him, guys. We, uh, we connected the question to the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> so we're obviously talking about soccer <laughs> uh, football. Uh, we're talking about american um, american football <laughs> i'll also mention a movie called Dor north dallas 40 from the 1970s with nick nolte great gritty old football movie that's and, awesome and what about one of the best football movies around dark knight rises i mean i almost did jerry, jerry Maguire with your argument like around football yeah. and like that well, same. I, I almost did uh, any given sunday just to be like really pedantic but come on i mean we, we still got to do al pacino so it's good <laughs> <laughs> right what I'm, about Air Bud Golden Receiver? <laughs> that's, that's the number one on IMDb. Oh, yeah. man. Well, I didn't know one picked Air He's Bud like Golden the receiver. dog Bo. Bud knows basketball. Bud, Bud knows, knows everything. Um, I will, uh, one really good tweet we got was from at Captain Lotso. The best football movie is about more than just football. It's about family, respect, and growing as a man. And he picked the garbage-picking, field-kicking Philadelphia Phenomena, which is a Disney movie starting Tony Danza, which I am not sure if it's real or not. I'm just assuming it is, and it's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> it can't possibly wow. be real. It is real. <laughs> no. Thank wow. you, Dan. <laughs> Amazing. Fact uh, check. I think it's a... What is it? I don't even know what it is. It's a TV show? Wow. <laughs> Thanks on the fact <laughs> check. Thank you for that. Um, and thank you, football fans. Now it's time for round three. Okay. Koi's up 2-0, but it's uh, any man's game. Oh my god, it's a blind fight! Ah! <laughs> That's a gif. Okay. Yeah. It's a blind fight, you guys. I'm gonna ask you a question, and then first one to uh, then respond with your answers. For this blind fight, Koi, Ed, please pick any character from an animated movie. The genie. Mm. Bugs Bunny. Great. Unlikely Fun. bedfellows. Yes. Mm. Wow. The genie, and you are picking the genie from the movie Aladdin. Aladdin. Great. <laughs> Maybe there's another, but I hope. <laughs> All right, and I assume Bugs Bunny's been in movies, oh, right? Oh, Bugs Bunny for any of the yeah. Warner Brothers movies. Yeah, great. Uh, okay, here is your question Which animated character? would be the ultimate survivor in The Purge. <laughs> oh, dude, 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 wow. dude. Which oh my God. animated character would be the ultimate survivor in The Purge? Koi, you're starting us off for round numero trace. Now, I will not lead with the obvious of I have three wishes, so therein I can wish away the purge, because that just seems unfair. I will lean into the fact that I have a genie that can grant me any number of things to help me survive the purge. So I, if I cannot in this universe grant myself out of it, I can get any supplies. I have a great friend. This guy is the best. He's funny, so if I'm hiding out for months at a time, I have entertainment. He's a great guy that like only wants what's best for me because he knows I'm going to free him at the end. There's no argument there. Like The genie knows we're homies, so I'm definitely going to free him at the end of this purge slash three witches. Uh, I'm in a situation where I'm hanging out with Robin Williams, which makes me very happy just in general. Uh, I'm in a situation where I've got an all-powerful deity on my side, so there is no one that's going to want to mess with me. I'm in the purge. I want gun power. I want strength. I also want hilarity and entertainment and compassion. And I got the genie, so I feel like I'm going to get hands. All right. Opening salvo for the genie. Ed, let's talk about bugs. Look, man, this is, this is no contest. This seems like a gift from heaven, because Bugs Bunny 
is the ultimate survivor. Some kids are chasing you down an alley. They're, they're chasing Bugs Bunny down the alley. All of a sudden, there's a hot, sexy lady down there. <laughs> and they're like, dumbfounded by this hot, sexy lady. And then she puts their head in a waffle iron press. You know what I mean? It's just un unbeatable. You talk about, and, and I'd like to clarify, are you the genie or are you the dude with the, with the lamp? Because if, you, if you've pledged to not use your wishes to get out of the purge, I'm gonna make, Bugs Buddy will make you use three wishes on all the chainsaws he's dropping on you and holes he's drawing in walls and stuff. <laughs> so I think- Are we that, against I, each yeah, other? Yeah, I think that takes away, but if you are the genie, Bugs Buddy would find a way to trick your ass back in that lamp. <laughs> <laughs> so, so either way, Bugs Bunny, uh, dude, I'm, I'm done. Yeah. Is, the, is this a duel? Mic? All right, is it a duel? Drop this mic? You know what? Make it a duel. Is make it, it duel? whatever okay. you want. Okay. <laughs> it's a duel. No, no, We're okay. talking about animated characters. Okay. The <laughs> That's true. Do whatever. Who knows? Who knows what might happen? <laughs> All right. Blind fight. I. <laughs> One of my wishes would be that Bugs Bunny never gets to animate anything of himself. So he is stuck as a mere rabbit. No dresses, no guns, no fingers to solve things. Bugs Bunny is just a mere rabbit. So he can use all of his repertoire of ingenious ideas, but without any assistance. So Bugs is trapped in a pre tricky situation because he's basically someone in Who Framed Roger Rabbit that doesn't have any 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 ground well, to move okay, on. Okay, well my 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 well my well thought out rebuttal to that is boo. That's like me saying like like You, you wish me back in a lamp. You put me back in a lamp. I get defensive. That's like me saying <laughs> <laughs> Nobody puts nobody, nobody puts genie puts in the corner. Lamp. Nobody does. <laughs> nobody puts genie in the corner. Um, all I'm saying is <laughs> I, I even as even as a mere rabbit I'm still a cartoon rabbit, baby. <laughs> and, and I can, I can, dude, all I know is uh, if, if you started coming after me and I was in the purge, I would just, as Bugs Bunny, go down wherever he goes in that hole and come back with all the travel stamps on my suitcase and be like, whoo, I outlasted that purge, baby. So, <laughs> it, it, you, know, you know what I mean? So even as a cartoon rabbit, I'll do some Watership Down, baby. I'll get my rabbit homies. <laughs> And, you know what I mean? <laughs> we can do this. As a regular rabbit, I'll still take it down, blue boy. <laughs> so I think as a genie, not only genie, not only do I have 24 <laughs> hours to deal with whatever I can, I can have a great old time doing it. Genie gives me three wishes. I only need to use one of them. I become a prince and I just lock everything up for 24 hours. Rich people tend to survive the purge somehow. I mean, that's the world we're living in. So I would have the genie just grant me that and I'm good. I'm cozy. There's no stakes with the genie because I'm just sad. I'm good. The uh, rabbit is still a guy that can get hurt. He if can get, you, I mean, but cartoon, if you... But, I'm just, I need I reiterate, you're in your house. Mm -hmm. You've got all the purge blinders down, as it were, okay? And you lay down next to your wife, your beautiful, sexy wife, and it's me, Bugs Bunny! Oh. It's me, Bugs no! Bunny! This is a traumatic, this is a traumatic purge! I'm not sure how this is winning, it's just terrifying, I'm haunted! I just don't know, I will need the genie to grant me PTSD solutions. I do not know how to solve this problem. I just think that with Bugs Bunny, you always worry about the fact that Bugs Bunny puts himself first. So if we're gonna go logic, we're gonna go like college thesis on this. If I'm teaming up with Bugs Bunny, I'm worried about Bugs Bunny self-serving. So Bugs Bunny and you are the last two people in the room. Bugs Bunny's gonna save his own ass. He's Bugs Bunny. The genie is my homie. We got three wishes. We're bonded together. I'm saving him with that last one. I got two wishes with my boy, whereas Bugs, he'll betray you. He'll survive the purge. I wouldn't want to risk it. I think we've bonded. It's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, all right, let's call it right there. Wow. Um... <laughs> Woo! That was one of the weirdest fights <laughs> I've been a part of, and I loved it. Yeah, that was uh, what, 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 a, what a frightening, what a frightening uh, episode <laughs> of Looney Tunes that would be. Uh, you know, I mean, it's uh, you know, Ed. I, I think like it's what the genie like he could wish himself out. He's all powerful. So um, yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't think you had a chance until Koi, this guy got into how wily and crazy. <laughs> he is. He is a maniac. <laughs> but he a psychopathic thinker. I don't trust him. Like, what a, what a frightening, you get into bed with your wife. <laughs> he we might do that to that you. Happen. He might do that to you. You don't want that. You Ed, go insane in 24 hours, I don't know. Ed, for my money, you just won an unwinnable battle. <laughs> Um, I give one. I give my point to Ed for that. Bugs Bunny, too cuckoo. Dan, this fight was like watching a Bugs Bunny cartoon, <laughs> yeah. and that Koi had 
had the gun and he kept creeping up on Bugs Bunny and Ed kept putting his fingers in the barrel and he just exploded. I don't know how he got out of it. He should be dead. He, he didn't stand a chance. He did everything that Koi threw at him. You can't draw things. You can't be a bug. Okay, then I'll just dig into the ground. You know? Every time Koi made it into a corner, Ed found a way out. How can you not give it to Ed? Yes. I gotta give it to Ed. And like everything Ed brought up, that was like canon. Like bu bu Bugs Bunny coming up with like a suitcase with all those things around. Yeah, I remember that. He had backstory and he had references. I literally, I was just incredulous. I was like, I, the genie, but okay. Yeah, no, it's true. Well earned point for that. Danielle, what's going on on the socials? Oh, yeah. Um, everybody is very pro Bugs. It was 79 Bugs, 20% genie. That isn't even a percentage that makes sense. <laughs> we're missing a 1% of people who were like, mm. Buzz Lightyear. Someone yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Somehow 1% um, went to Buzz. Hey, so uh, a couple of things of note. A lot of people were like, yeah, Bugs is like super violent. Obviously, he would win. Um, also, it turns out a lot of you have figured out how much I love corgis and keep trying to send me corgis, so I will talk about you on the show. <laughs> Danielle and the Queen, they love corgis. Uh, you know, I expect that the next movie fight is just going to be a bunch of like gifs of like Sasha Banks. It's fine. Um, Nick Director on Twitter put, um, FUD has been trying to bird, uh, purge bugs for years, which I really liked. <laughs> And then um, at Troy Loxton wrote, I picked Superman's mouth as best animated character. Ah, oh, hot. yeah, the little, the, little, the little baby mustache mouth. Um, I get it, you're funny. It is funny, just dark. It's just dark. It's too soon, it's too soon. We just experienced this. Our hearts this. are broken, don't do this to me. All right, uh, wow, um, it is two to one in favor of Koi, but it is anybody's game going into the speed round. Just a little reminder of the speed round rules. So it's two one, first player to four wins, okay? We have four potential speed round questions here, and they each, each player gets 20 seconds to stage an initial argument, then a 10 second rebuttal. They each get a 10 second rebuttal. And when I ask a question, the first person I hear, that person will go first, the other person will go second, obviously. Uh, Ed, you feeling it? Feeling bugsy in, baby, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Koi, have you done some all of the cocaine you do before I the speed round? I am prepared and ready, and the 80s are alive! <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, uh, Koi is drug-free for speed round. <laughs> for the so, record, hi, Mom, well, yeah, I love we, you. Yes, we, 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 do, we do extensive testing before, uh, all right. Just like the NFL. <laughs> Tell the truth. JTE, roll that package. Just kidding, there's no package. All right. First speed round question. Other than Mario, what classic Nintendo game would make the best animated movie? Zelda. Heard the Legend of Zelda. All right, Duck Hunt. Duck Hunt. <laughs> All right, we got Zelda versus Duck Hunt. We heard Koi first, 20 seconds on the clock for Koi Jandro. On a painting of a picture of a magical fantasy world, we have a female lead, which is more and more required, especially in animated film. I want to take you on a journey through every level of puzzle making and solving and make kids smarter. I want to take you on a journey with a movie that would make kids want to think, want to solve, want to have magical adventures, and it's outside your medieval times. It's Lord of the Rings, but for kids. It's Game of Thrones, but for kids. And it's Link. Who doesn't love Link? This is fun. It's got great dialogue. It's got beautiful imagery. The animation's fun. 20 seconds start whenever you speak. In a post-apocalyptic world where ducks have taken over, you and a lonely band of dudes with buckshot are the only thing between us and a foul existence. <laughs> Duck hunt. 2019, summer. That's the trailer. All right, rebuttal. Well timed. Uh, the thing with Duck Hunt is that it looks the same in animation, so you already have the game, and it wouldn't last very long. It'd be a good 20 minutes, but I want a movie, and if I want a movie, I want a full story, and Zelda's a full story. That somehow doesn't have a movie yet. We need a movie. Animated is the way to go, because there's a budget restrictions. I want a Zelda movie. This is the best way to get it. <laughs> in a post-apocalyptic world, <laughs> we don't even remember if Zelda was the guy or the princess. <laughs> Duck Hunt. 2019. <laughs> Whoa, there it is. Damn, wow. Uh, okay, I mean, uh, you guys both came out of their guns blazing, and uh, Koi, 
I mean, I, I, you said so many words. <laughs> I, I want Zelda. Yes. Um, and uh, you painted a picture of like, you know, the like, I don't know. I wasn't as into the puzzles. I was, you <laughs> sold me on this thing. It's like, how's he gonna do it? Post-apocalyptic. And then you put like the, the foul existence in there. Sick puns. I'm all about sick puns. I'm gonna give one to Ed. Uh, Danielle, talk to us. This is, uh, let us know your thoughts. Um, I, I, while I appreciate that Koi is the um, six from Blossom of movie fights, as someone who is also a fast talker who has been told they need to slow all the way down. Um, I, I am on team sick puns. I got to give it to Ed. Bam. Ed takes this one. Dan, any facts you want to throw at us? Uh, or no, thoughts? although I think that would, I, I was leaning toward Ed also. So. Nice. <laughs> um, all right. Link is a lady. <laughs> she's a nice woman. She needs respect and to know she's a nice lady. <laughs> wow. Uh, we got a hell of a ball game here because we're locked up at 2-2. Here's your next question. Ooh, this one's a doozy. After Black Panther, what other famous cat should Chadwick Boseman play? <laughs> uh, Grumpy. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry, that was great radio. Um, uh, you know what? I think I'll go with Heathcliff. Heathcliff. Mm-hmm. All right. We have Grumpy Cat versus Heathcliff the Cat. Koi, you spoke first. 20 seconds begin whenever you speak. Studios are always trying to find a new IP. What better way than to actually make a meme into a movie than have Chadwick Boseman, a brilliant actor, bring gravitas and power behind Grumpy Cat, the face that launched a thousand memes as portrayed by an actor that can make him relevant and worthwhile. The only man I would see portray such an important cat is Chadwick Boseman. He brings such power to the role, such powerful voice, and that cat can do everything. Time. Ed, 20 seconds begin whenever you speak. Heathcliff's black man. Okay. He, he's kicking it in the junkyard with his homies. His girlfriend is so hot. So hot with the leg warmers. Come on, man. Like I just feel like I just feel like Heathcliff. Oh, wait, no, he's got the th- well he's got he's got it. No, his girl's thick. He's black! Heathcliff's girl is the thick one. She's he's like, come on, man, Sadwick. Alright. Ten second rebuttal. I'd take a 10 minute movie of that, but I want a full movie where I experience the adventures a la Air Bud. I want to see an Air Bud with Grumpy Cat voiced by Chadwick Boseman. And Ch- Grumpy Cat deserves Chadwick Boseman. We need that character. And he's probably black too. Time. <laughs> I just want to see a cool black cat in the junkyard having fun, you know, and picking up broads even though you're in the junkyard. I mean, that's game. I mean, again, this is, this is, I think this is a slam dunk, guys. Chadwick Boseman, keep it. Time. Wow. Oh, uh, let's start with Dan Merle this time. <laughs> wow. I don't know. That's, uh, that is. <laughs> I love this show. Uh, <laughs> I think it's the gravitas of, of, of Chadwick Boseman uh, that he would bring to Grumpy Cat, perhaps, brought, pushed me over the edge. So I'll go, I'll go with Koi. <laughs> One O. Oh. What a sentence. <laughs> the gravitas of Chadwick Boseman is Grumpy Cat. Danielle. <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna fact check this for a second. Grumpy Cat's a lady. Oh, is she? Her name's Tartar Sauce. Hey. But div- but we're, we're only basing this on the arguments. I just wanted to put that out there. Grumpy Cat, Tartar Sauce. She's the most famous lady cat of most of time. Like um, Link, no one knows. <laughs> um, man, I really. <laughs> oh, I guess I'm done. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, as much as I loved the idea of a Grumpy Cat. I, too, want to see Heathcliff just, like, hanging out in a junkyard, making it work, picking up thick women. <laughs> <laughs> so I have, I have to go with it. Nice. Okay, this it's 1-1. One, so one. silly. <laughs> um, so wow. Okay. So, uh, uh, you, I mean, you, you really you had something with the gravitas, if you want to, like, add. And Chadwick Boseman, it's he's regal. done that. Not just with... Um, Black Panther, but uh, uh, with uh, Jackie Robinson, Thurgood Marshall, and um, but you know what? 
you had something like a really cool angle on that saying Heathcliff is a black man, lives in a junkyard. I mean, you reminded me of one of my favorite sitcom characters of all times, Red Fox. Um, he was a junkyard man himself and uh, owned a junkyard. Oh, hell yeah, great theme song. Sanford and Son is a classic. Um, but then, Coy, you came back with... Uh, trying to pull the rug out from under Ed, saying, I go with a 10 minute movie, but I want an epic of Grumpy Cat? Like, where is there 10 minutes of material in Grumpy Cat? Airbud with Grumpy Cat. I don't know, I don't think you <laughs> laid it out for me uh, uh, quite that, I, I, I just like, like 10 minutes, but you're talking about a meme. Mm -hmm. Like, so um, that didn't work for me. I, so, oh, you, you, you brought some gravitas to it, but I gotta give the point to Ed. So, we are at 3-2, Ed, 3-2, Ed. Woo! Going to the third question of this speed round. What a great moment in sports. Here we go. What two movie stars should be the new Men in Black? What two movie stars, new Men in Black? <laughs> We're all giggles, no this answers. Like, I love this novel approach to the speed round. The, the judgments like a are longer stand. than the arguments, and the answers are longer than the judgments. We're in a Mexican standoff. Oh, okay. mm. oh five. I know, I know. I know. Four. Uh, uh, Brian Cranston and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Five. Nick Four. Offerman and Michael B. Jordan. Okay. Ooh. Offerman, Jordan. Cranston and The Rock. Okay, Ed, heard you first. Uh, so the time <laughs> begins whenever you speak. Um, I do believe it would be interesting to do uh, Men in Black with Dwayne The Rock Johnson and uh, Brian Cranston, and you could do it either way. Have The Rock be the experienced agent and Brian Cranston stumbling into this job after being a teacher and doing meth or whatever. Uh, you, there's so many different ways you could do it, or you could flip flip the roles, but either way, uh, The Rock's uh, physical strength would be tempered by uh, 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 Cranston's gravitas, as you said. Coy. The thing that makes Men in Black work is the grizzled old and the, the new rookie. Michael B. Jordan playing the rookie Will Smith part and, and then Nick Offerman's voice just, just upset and dealing with Michael B. Jordan. It's got all the levels of the old Men in Black, which is what makes it not 21 Jump Street, what makes it not uh, that movie that The Rock did with uh, Kevin Hart. The Rock makes The Rock movies. He doesn't make other movies. I don't want this to be a Rock movie. I want this to be Men in Black and I want it to be an adaptation. 10 second rebuttal. I like that you mentioned that crummy movie, Central Intelligence, because I do believe this would be a nice do-over of that in that uh, he would be an experienced agent and, and I do believe Cranston would play a scientist that is drafted into working with the Men in Black. Jumanji was the do-over and it was great, it made all the money. The problem with Men in Black <laughs> is that you need that dynamic, it's the lethal weapon dynamic, and that's why Nick Offerman and Michael B. Jordan are the only two they can make that work. He is K and he is J, and that's a movie I actually really want to see and I've thought about it and I'd buy it. Wow, woo, how about it? Let's start with Danielle Radford. Oh, I, you know, I have not been super pumped on the idea of this reboot, but I would literally watch both of these movies if they mm -hmm. were called something different and weren't Men in Black. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Ed, I loved your arguments, but as soon as Koi said lethal weapon dynamic, I was like, yeah. <laughs> so I got to give this one to Koi. Okay. Oh, and for the record, Koi needs to take this uh, to send it into our final sudden death question. <laughs> Uh, he needs this to keep the game going. Dan. I would also, I think, give it to Coy. Ed was pitching uh, Walter White, which I think Brian Cranston is, uh, I don't know, the dynamic I was much more excited about. I had a better idea of the movie. I am going with Coy. Yeah. All right, Coy takes the point. Man. That Heathcliff, it threw me off. I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> I pictured it, I saw it, distracted me. After this question, one of you will walk home a winner, one of you will walk home a loser. By the way, why are you both walking home? Um, okay, uh, great battle for both of you. Um, this has been a great movie, Fights. And here is our final question for all the marbles. What Star Wars supporting character would make the worst spinoff? Hmm. Emma Akbar. Wow. Oh, God. Uh, Wedge. Wedge. <laughs> okay. We have Akbar versus Wedge. Ed, you spoke first. 20 seconds begin whenever you speak. I got my feelings there for 
uh, didn't wedge at Silly's die, so I or, or something. So I guess that might be uh, the reason why that would be. But Admiral Akbar, under the sea, as a weird submarine captain drafted into a war he doesn't understand, and then he rises up the ranks. He swims up the ranks, if you will. Come on, that's awful. That's like the worst type of procedural. <laughs> Underwater military procedural. Blah. <laughs> Careful, Disney might buy that. That's only movie that makes. <laughs> the problem with Wedge is not only is he someone that died, you're supposed to fill for her. His name is Wedge. Throughout the movie, you're supposed to rally behind a guy named Wedge. The guy's name is Wedgie. You're supposed to be like, oh, this is our leader. This is a military commander named Wedge. They try to make it cool. It wouldn't work. It'd be painful. And we've seen enough TIE Fighter-esque movies. X-Wing, we've seen it. We've had it. That at least is different and interesting. <laughs> Plus, it's a trap iconic. Time. 10 second rebuttals. I mean, realistically, that Adam Akbar show would be the worst thing ever. Like, I, I'm trapped in a terrible series. Yeah, it's it's it would be the worst thing you ever saw. And they tried to sell Adam Akbar toys. Wedge Antilles is remembered fondly only because of his friendship. If they tried to make a movie about it, it would be a betrayal of the legacy of the character, and that's what they might do. And that's why I don't want this to happen. Wedge forever ish. Don't make a movie. <laughs> Time. Wow. Okay. Dan Merle. Hmm. Talk to us. This is very difficult. I mean, half of Koi's argument was about his name. Mm. There's a guy named Chewy that we <laughs> love. <laughs> we love him, and his name is Chewy. Yeah. Uh, so that doesn't really strike for me. And I needed, like, if, if Ed had come back, like, guns blazing, and, like, he would have taken it for me easily. That's true. But. I guess I, I have to go down to how they describe their movies for me, and it's like, would I rather, would it be a worse movie to see the TIE Fighter movie, or would it be a worse movie for me to see the underwater creature procedural? I guess it's that one, so I guess Ed, but it's a, I, I don't know. Uh, Ed, I'll say Ed. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, the, play, the player in me is coming out here, Hal. And it was, yeah. Uh, no, I appreciate like I appreciate your feelings about the arguments. You're picking a winner, but you're letting us know. Tell us, uh, you know, what? A very tricky thing. You had us do Pacino so early. Yeah. You had us do Pacino um, real hard. I'm gonna go to Danielle Radford. Yeah, those were literally the same notes I wrote. My no my notes were literally Koi, Wedge, terrible name, too many TIE fighters, portrayal of the legacy of the character. I thought that was a great argument. Ed, Akbar, under the sea adventurer, worst kind of procedural, bad toys. So, um looking at oh, yes, an under the sea procedural will be the worst. Um, I hate procedurals. I have to say portrayal of the legacy of the character is a stronger argument against for me. Someone with Koi. Ooh, it's 1-1. One, one. So, uh, comes down here. To me, uh, so yeah, I, I, I echo a lot of the points we heard over there. Um, yeah, I think we got caught up in a little semantics. You said it would be a, a terrible series at one point. Oh, I yeah, think yeah. we're uh, talking about just like a spin-off movie. Um, but yeah, uh, again, I got really hung up. There wasn't enough about the, uh, it, like the, the whole first argument was just about the name, uh, Wedge. Yeah. And uh, that like, for me, like that, tw that 20 seconds or so was kind of moot because mm. it's like the name doesn't matter. So if I'm taking the sum of the rest of the parts of the arguments, I feel like Ed took it and Ed takes movie fights today. Yeah. Wow. All right, okay. Ed Greer. All right. You just won movie well, fights. I, what are you gonna do next? Uh, I'm not gonna go to Disneyland. Okay. <laughs> it's very close. Uh -huh. um, but well fought out. Wow. Yeah. That, that, that was a great fight, fight going. Dude, that, that was intense, weird fight. That was really good, man. I uh, really, I, I'm, it's a pleasure to share the stage with this guy. He's heck very, yeah. He's very Dude, that was, a, that was a fun, weird journey. Yeah, that, I, 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 versus, uh... It was a pleasure <laughs> to be right here in the middle of both of you worthy combatants. I feel so pretty. Yes, <laughs> you are. Um, go ahead and plug some shit. Okay, take two on the plugs, baby. Uh, you know, uh, my podcast, Nerd Goat, uh, it's it's really cool. It's on the Bill Bonds uh, network, and we we talk to people about their favorite fictional character of all time. I'd love to have you on. I'd love to, man. Uh, and it's, it's a podcast that's growing, and now we're opening a Patreon and everything. It, it's awesome. really cool. So it's called Nerd Goat Podcast, nerdgoatpodcast.com. Check that out. 
Hell yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, Koi, you were awesome today. Please uh, tell us something that's going on with you. Break. Dibs on Deadpool or Tyler Durden, one of those two. Okay. Uh, I host Marvel Movie News for Popcorn Talk. I do my own show, which is uh, Insta Reviews, where I basically review whatever I'm enjoying. So I think the internet should be a force of positivity, so I talk about things I love. So movies, TV, books, uh, and experience. And if you guys send me suggestions, I will I will review it. So in my Instagram is literally just tons of videos of me talking very fast for a minute. So if you like speed around, that's kind of what inspired it. So uh, I enjoy talking with Zia like Forever. so my Instagram is that. I'm at Koi John on Twitter and Instagram, and I love this this format, man. I, I enjoy the speed round so much and like this weird banter it's, of stuff see, you don't have any place to use. Right. Thanks, and, brother. And I'll, I'll second that because I, I see a lot of scuttlebutt about, yeah, it's not a new format. Use some this is the shit. Everybody got to talk. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and like, yeah. it's fun to talk about weird stuff. Nowhere else can I argue Genie versus Bugs Bunny and nowhere else <laughs> can I win a fight with the Mandarin over the Red Skull. Yep. So what a magical, yeah. Hell yeah. You're so both excellent. Uh, Dan Merle, uh, <laughs> tell us something that's going on. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Baby Ellen and I were just trying to puzzle out who could have and how could they have rigged this game. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally impossible. It was a blind fight uh, involving cartoons. It was a cartoons. blind fight and four speed round questions that answers we don't know. Yeah. I really, I wish I could post just like rigs. <laughs> like, it's fine. We're fine. It's fun. It's fun. We just, we, it's fun. We have a whole second show here, Hal. Uh, uh, while the plugs are going on, we just get to watch things going by. It's a good time for it's everybody. Fun. Conspiracy theories behind movie fights. <laughs> I, I honestly think, and I know that so many people, did we need a third option besides the genie and Bugs Bunny? I don't think so. <laughs> it was a lot. It was already a lot. Uh, yeah. So I hope that people are, are adjusting to the new format, and this was a great fight. It was hilarious, and I look forward to another fun one next week, Hell. Thanks, Dan. Danielle. Yeah, this was fantastic. This was such a good fight. Um, Bugs Bunny kind of already is like a genie. He's like a magical <laughs> trickster and like, right? like, Sorry, I, I almost went like full on Greek theater nerd because I pulled that for you, the fans. Um, but yeah, so uh, uh, yeah, this was a great fight. Both really good fighters. I can't wait to see um, both of y'all back and doing more fighting. This I had was to an fight against fight. Shane Black today. That was so hard. Man. Wow. And I love of Shane Black. When you said Lethal Weapon, like that made me so happy that I'm not the only Lethal Weapon love. So that was, this was a, and Red Skull was one of my picks too. Man. Hey, this, a this hinged on me thinking hard after you said Genie. This whole thing. <laughs> I was like, I thought so damn hard. Like, this is awful radio right You know, here. It, it paid off. And uh, I want to thank you guys for being a part of the good times. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'm Hal Rudnick. Hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at Hal Rudnick. And I want to thank JTE and Billy Biz in the booth. Thank you to the Dans and thank you to our competitors again. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.